What up, brethren? I'm Leon, the Paperback Maniac, and today I wanted to do a quick little video discussing one of my absolute favorite writers of horror fiction, John Shirley. John Shirley is an American writer born in 1953 who has published dozens of novels, I think over 40, and at least seven or eight short story collections in a multitude of genres, primarily science fiction, fantasy, and of course horror. Now, although most casual readers of the genre may be unfamiliar with his name, which is a fucking injustice, Shirley was indubitably influential in both the splatterpunk and cyberpunk subgenres. The man did know his punk. In fact, uh, he led quite an interesting life. Uh, in the 70s, he was in a number of bands. Uh, he was the lead vocalist of the band uh, Sado Nation, uh, and he's also been in groups uh, such as Obsession and the Panther Moderns. Uh, now, today we're going to be talking about his books, and I'm going to be showing my humble little collection of uh, John Shirley books, uh, which really never got the praise that they deserved. Uh, I feel like a lot of these books were published before their time. He's one of those writers who was cursed to sort of be like, you know, ahead of his time and, and therefore, you know, never really got that recognition. Uh, you know, early on in his career, he wrote a book called City Come A-Walkin, which uh, is considered a, a proto-cyberpunk book. Um, and he continued to write cyberpunk through the 80s, but he never really saw, you know, the success of his peers, you know, people like William Gibson, with whom he had actually collaborated early in his career, and who was probably, frankly, inspired by, his, I think, some of his stuff. But uh, same thing goes with horror. Uh, you know, he, he wrote some novels early on in the in the early 80s, definitely that could be considered proto-splatterpunk books. But, you know, by the time that even became a thing, of course, he got zero recognition. Um, you know, he's also a screenwriter. Uh, he's published, he's uh, written scripts, probably the most notable of which is for uh, the 1994 film The Crow. But uh, that one, interestingly enough, was rewritten by uh, the splatterpunk writer David J. Scow. Uh, and these days, I guess Scow seems to get all the credit for that screenplay. Uh, I guess just another example of Shirley getting screwed, though I'm sure you know it's not Scow's fault. But um, yeah, I think that he is an incredibly underappreciated and underrated uh, writer. And so I wanted to kind of highlight and show some of the books of his that I have because I do think that uh, viewers of this channel uh, would really appreciate, especially, you know, his horror stuff. The horror stuff of his I've read is absolutely phenomenal. So we're going to be looking at uh, John Shirley today. So the first one, and these are roughly in chronological order. First one here is Dracula in Love. Now, this book was published by Zebra in 1979, and this was uh, one of the first, if not the first, uh, book that Shirley uh, ever wrote. He, he wrote this very early on. I, th I think he claims he was like 18, which I find hard to believe because it, this definitely is uh, feels almost more mature uh, than that, definitely in its writing uh, prowess. It, it's a very well-written book. All of his books are very well-written. Uh, but this one, you might... Uh, you know, look at that, hear that name and see that title and that cover and think, oh, that, that sounds sweet. But uh, no, you would be mistaken. This is not a sweet novel. This is an incredibly uh, brutal and visceral novel. Uh, could, could be considered problematic by today's standards. Definitely a rapey book. Uh, deals with the uh, modern day descendant of Vlad the Impaler and sort of his exploits. Um, but very, very uh, just intense and got some amazing imagery that has stuck with me, even though it's been a number of years since I've read this book. Definitely one that I would like to revisit at some point. Okay, the next one we're looking at is The Brigade. Uh, this book was published by Avon in 1981. I have not read this one yet. Definitely looks more like a psycho thriller type book, but uh, uh, one that I do plan to get to at some point, for sure. All right, the next one is one of my absolute favorites. Here we have Sellers, uh, and this was also published by Avon in 1982. And this was the first uh, John Shirley book I ever read, and... Frankly, um, you know, if it weren't for the ending, which is a little abrupt and uh, misanthropic, even for my tastes, uh, this could, I could confidently say is one of my, if not my favorite horror novel. Um, just utterly 
amazing. Uh, this book takes place in early 80s NYC, and it really evokes you know that early New York City of the 80s, that sleazy-ass, grimy city vibe. Uh, absolutely love it. It's got just some amazing uh, just ideas and creatures. The head below is insane. It's got, you know, creepy evil children. I wish I could, you know, give you like a uh, like a synopsis of this, I, I feel I don't feel confident enough to do that. But well, maybe I'll read the uh, this the, the back cover just to give you an idea. This this may not be totally accurate, as we know. But um, flesh for Satan. Okay, so that's not that accurate. There's there's no Satan in this book. In a deserted subway tunnel far below the city, a young woman is ritually slashed to pieces. In an apartment building across town. A little boy, seething with demonic urges, lures a friend down into the sub-basement. On shadowed streets, hordes of shrieking children are stalking human victims for sacrifice to him. Evil has erupted from the pits of hell, its blessed minions hungering for the flesh and blood of terrified millions. A city is clutched in the dripping talons of unspeakable horror, devoured in the nightmare battle between the forces of good and the invisible armies of eternal darkness. Yeah, so um, this book is highly, highly recommended. As I said, uh, definitely a proto-splatterpunk novel. Uh, you know, and I think these days it, it's getting a little, little more recognition. I know that this book was reissued a few years ago, and Edward Lee wrote uh, an introduction in which he talked about how you know influential this book was uh, on him early in his writing career, you know, when he, when he read it, when it was first published. But um, yeah, just if you love Lovecrafty and stuff, it's got really everything that I could want, you know, the, the creepy mutant little evil kids, like weird Lovecraftian monsters that suck people through drains and live in the sewers of New York City. Uh, yeah, highly, highly recommended. All right, now we're going to be taking a look at his... Um, trio of books uh, called A Song, I think it's called A Song Called Youth, or it's also known as the Eclipse Trilogy. Uh, this is a trilogy of uh, cyberpunk novels. I have not read any of these, but I am, I am definitely uh, planning to at some point. The first one is called Eclipse, and uh, these were all put out by Popular Library, by the way. Uh, the first one came out in 1985, and um, yeah, I love I, I love eighties SF covers too. Like it's just really, really cool. Um, so here's the first one. And then the second one in the series is Eclipse Penumbra. Uh, this one was put out by Popular Library in 1988. And then the third one in the trilogy is Eclipse Corona, and this one was published by Popular Library in 1990. So yeah, these are supposed to be uh, just great, great uh, cyberpunk, sort of like dystopian uh, novels. And these books um, have been reissued, and in fact, I think a lot of his books, he's recently, in the past few years, reissued them um, in ebook format. Although I've heard that he has uh, a tendency to sort of update them, and I, I really wish he wouldn't do that. So he kind of tries, you know, to modernize them and update the references, um, you know, and and that's why you know I will seek out the originals because I don't like that. I don't like when writers try to update update their books, you know, try to change them up. Anyway, um, next up, okay, going back to horror, a great one. This is in darkness waiting. Uh, and this was published by Onyx in 1988. And this is um, this is another one of those uh, early Shirley books that I read. It was actually one of the first books that I read that really uh, got me, you know, hip to Onyx. And I thought, oh, what is this company that's publishing, you know, cool stuff like this? But uh, this is one, you know, ostensibly it's kind of like a evil in a small town, but like all of Shirley's books, there's a lot more going on. There's a lot of uh, subtext and a lot of like kind of uh, commentary that he's making and he's just using these horror novels as a vehicle, but they never seem preachy. They never seem like, you know, they're trying, they're, there's always a great story there and just really, uh, you know, interesting writing. Um, I will read the synopsis of this one as well. Why not? 
Prayer of the Damned. The thing was on the window frame, crouched, poised. Martindale shuddered, but not with horror, with a great relief. You're real, he said as he fell to his knees. But I kneel for God, not you, to thank God for this sign. Thank you. He made a high, gulping noise as the thing flung itself at his head, its wings a blur, its small, black, human hands opening and closing, its bristling tail quivering, extruding the yellow, oozing stinger. He flailed at it, lost sight of it, tried to shout, Jess! The second part of the holy name, or I guess that was supposed to be Jeez, the holy name blended into a warbling sob, a sound that spoke of the full horror of defilement. The thing had found his neck and driven its stinger into his spine, just under the skull, and the pain was another kind of revelation. <laughs> so I guess that ended up being an excerpt <laughs> from the book. But um, anyway, uh, this is a really cool book, as I said, ostensibly kind of like a, a creature novel, but with a lot more going on underneath the surface. Um, really, really uh, recommended, especially you know anyone who likes 80s horror, supernatural type 80s horror. This is one that you got to check out. All right, uh, now going back to like one of his weirder books, uh, just to show you his sort of uh, his range, we've got uh, Camus of Cadizar, The Black Hole of Carcosa. Now this book uh, was published by St. Martin's Press in 1988, and it is, uh, I guess, a sequel to a novel called Dark World Detective by um, Michael Reeves. And um, first of all, just what a glorious cover, right? I fucking love that cover so much. This, uh, some people actually say that this is also sort of uh, a forerunner to the bizarro uh, subgenre. So this guy really just was writing these books before these subgenres were even a thing. This is kind of like a wacky, offbeat uh, fantasy science fiction novel about this uh, private eye who who lives, you know, he's on a, another planet and just, uh, you know, the crazy shit that he deals with. So, um, yeah, this is one I have not read yet, but I definitely plan to. <laughs> just an amazing uh, cover. Really, really cool. But, you know, yeah, you know, he was able to write these these wacky books as well. So, um, so that's that's pretty cool. Next up is a story collection of his. Uh, I believe this was the first story collection he ever published, uh, Heat Seeker. Uh, this one was put out by um, Scream Press in 1989. And actually, I think this one is signed, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, that one is signed. Uh, Shirley was also an amazing uh, short story writer, and he and he's published a number of stories. Uh, sadly, uh, I don't have, I couldn't find all of them. I, I have one of his called Black Butterflies, which I believe won the Bram Stoker Award for uh, short fiction collection. Um, it was published in ninety seven or ninety eight, and uh, just an amazing uh, collection. I also have, uh, I would also recommend uh, one of his collections called In Extremis. Uh, the most extreme horror fiction of John Shirley. That's one of his that I think I, I have it on Kindle, and that's got some of his like more kind of like splattery uh, horror short stories. But really, really uh, good stuff. I would I would recommend checking out. Yeah, short fiction is is great as well. Um, so. All right, and the last book of his actually that we're gonna uh, look at today is Wet Bones. This is another. Uh, favorite of mine. It's really up there. It's kind of neck and neck with Sellers, probably as my favorite. Uh, this book was originally published in hardcover in 1991, um, but uh, this edition I'm holding is the UK uh, 1993 softcover edition. It was put out by, um, well, this one came out by Blake Publishing. And it had, this is the same cover as the original hardcover. I do I do dig that cover. And then I also have the uh, 1999 Leisure reprint of it. And um, this was a book that I found um, in a bookshop in uh, Seoul, South Korea. And I read this and I absolutely loved it. I, I don't know if I said, so this Leisure edition came out in 1999. Um, this is just, uh, an incredible novel, uh, just another, just amazing splatterpunk, uh, type splatter novel that just really, I don't know, it didn't 
get talked of a lot. But then again, I guess it came out a little later in the 90s. Um, really, really good. Definitely feels like uh, Stuart Gordon or uh, Brian Usna, maybe more appropriately. <laughs> Brian Usna circa like society type movie on PCP. Uh, that's how I would describe this. Um, let me see. Let's see what the back says. Into a Southern California ripe with the machinations of Hollywood, the lure of drugs, and the slick sheen of sex, comes a nameless ancient evil, a destroyer that completely ravages its victims' body and soul, leaving behind only wet bones. Blending supernatural horror worthy of Lovecraft with a razor-sharp outlaw street savvy, John Shirley presents a visceral, terrifying tale sure to sear the psyche of unwary readers. But can anyone truly be prepared for wet bones? Yeah, okay. Well, um, it's this is a great book. It's, you know, again, like the other ones, it's it's ostensibly just a balls to the wall, super gory, hyper violent, uh, you know, supernatural, kind of Lovecraftian uh, horror story, but a lot of sort of uh, underneath the surface uh, social commentary. Definitely t touches on themes such as addiction, which I I'm sh I think Shirley you know battled with in his life, and sort of like the 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 emptiness and the empty promise of Hollywood, uh, you know, because Shirley also has had a lot of um, uh, you know, background with that and experiences in Hollywood, but yeah, just so well done. And like I said, you know, if you, if you're a fan of, you know, those, uh, Stuart Gordon movies like from beyond or Brian Usina stuff like society, definitely, definitely check this book out. Uh, one of my all time favorites. So good. But, um, yeah, that's it, guys. Th those are those are the Shirley books, at least the ones I could find. Like I said, there were there are a couple more like Black Butterflies that I couldn't find, and um, a couple that I have on my Kindle. Uh, I do try to you know still get stuff on Kindle. I am aware you know that when I'm buying you know these old vintage editions, it, it really doesn't do shit for the author if if they're still alive. So I do try to I do support them, and I try. So I do I do have a, like a couple of his like other novels. Like I think I have another horror novel of his called Crawlers on my Kindle, uh, which I haven't yet read, but but I'm eager to. But he's just a great writer that uh, I think definitely needs a little more love. Um, I really hope that he gets it. I am confident that he will be discovered. Just I hope that it's going to be in his lifetime because as we know, especially in the horror genre, a lot of the times that doesn't happen. A lot of these writers just kind of languish in obscurity and struggle their whole lives. You know, Shirley is uh, these days, you know, is, is forced to like do a bunch of like novelizations and, you know, uh, video game uh novels and things just to you know to pay the rent it's hard being a living writer right but um i think that he will eventually get discovered um you know hopefully it will be in his lifetime a lot of these guys a lot of his peers you know struggled with that too michael shea it would be another writer or one of his compatriots another fantastic writer a guy who wrote more sort of fantasy but also some horror stuff yeah, he died, I think, in the last couple of years. But Michael Shea is another one I would highly recommend. Um, by the way, if you like Lovecraft stuff, uh, check out Michael Shea's story, Fat Face. I think you can maybe even get it on uh, Amazon, like digitally for like 99 cents. So, so good. But yeah, Shirley, John Shirley, check him out. I love him. Uh, at least, at the very least, if you're a horror fan, those three I mentioned, uh, Sellers, In Darkness Waiting, and Wet Bones. Those are, those are like the, the holy trifecta as far as I'm concerned. And I, I absolutely love all three of them. I want to reread them and I hope to reread and read these other books of his and, and read the sci-fi stuff as well, because he's just a very talented writer. But anyway, uh, that's that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're a fan of John Shirley's, if you've read any of those books or read any of the ones I haven't read, I'd be I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I want to do more of these sort of author highlight videos. You know, maybe in the future I'll do, um, you know, some on uh, some of my other favorite writers. You know, guys like uh, Layman or Sean Hudson. Uh, I'd, I'd love to to possibly do that. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I will catch you later. Peace out.